Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Okay, so here let's analyze what I think will happen next, also look at some answers on why this even happened, then my advice on some changes that Unity could make, and finally my advice to you going forward. But first, just the quick question in the title, will Unity roll back these changes? Right now a lot of people are wondering if this truly is the path forward, or if there's a tiny chance for a reversal. My quick answer is, if you're waiting for a reversal, then I would say don't wait. If a full reversal is the absolute only thing that would keep with Unity, if so, or simply if you feel trust is damaged beyond repair, then my simple advice is just move on to something else because personally I do not believe a big reversal is coming. Here are three reasons on why I think that. Now when I made the second video on this topic, which was one day after the announcement and pretty much everything was on fire, back then I generally believed there was a potential for a reversal considering the intensity of the backlash, but given the recent updates where all they did was clarify what cuts is an install and basically just define some exceptions, Based on that, it does seem like a reversal is really not coming at all. At best, they are willing to do some compromises, like we saw the exception on charity bundles, demos and reinstalls, but in general, it does seem like they are really committed to going down this path. Basically, since then, the backlash has continued. There's even a Twitter account tracking all the statements from all the various studios who pretty much have just said they're not going to use the Unity anymore. Basically, the general consensus is there are devs that are in the middle of development and they will keep using Unity to the end, but most of them, they feel that this has done irreparable harm and can no longer trust Unity and will no longer use it in future projects. So basically with that, that's another reason why I don't think there will be a reversal. Basically, a lot of people have already made up their minds and they won't quit Unity regardless of what happens. So if you were to play Devil's Advocate and look at the cold hard facts from Unity's side, they basically got two options. They can either revert this pricing or they can keep it. Now, if they revert, then those people who feel this whole situation has broken trust beyond repair, those will not return. So devs still quit Unity. And of course, by reverting the changes, they obviously won't make any revenue from this fee. Whereas if they keep the new pricing, then the devs still quit Unity just the same, but they do get extra revenue. Perhaps the ones that say and pay the fee, perhaps that won't be enough to offset the loss of all of these licenses. So basically, if you play Devil's Advocate, there's really no benefit on them to go back. So that's another reason why I really don't believe there won't be a reversal. I think at this point they are really committed to going down this path no matter what. And yet another reason is something that they actually themselves say. On the various official posts they mention how these changes will not affect 90% of customers, meaning they only impact the top 10%. Now Unity's business is very top heavy, they really only make money from a tiny handful of super huge devs. Those are devs that make things like Engine Impact and Marvel Snap. Those are the ones that really make them money. Meaning that looking at all the posts on this Twitter account, I've gone through pretty much all of them and all I see are indie devs. The reality is Unity's customers aren't really indies like you or me, it's the developers making the mega hits. So in terms of backlash against these changes, those are really the only ones that matter. And I cannot find any public statements from those big developers. Although I assume there are some serious discussions happening behind closed doors. Again, at this point it really goes back to simple math. If all of these developers quit, but the likes of Marvel Snap stays and happily pays the fee, if so, then it can actually be a net positive for them in terms of short-term profits. So again, if you're hoping for a full reversal, I don't believe it will happen. Now, if you're curious as to why this fee even came to be, why this idea was even thought of in the first place, there's a great Twitter thread with tons and tons of infos by someone who was there in the very early stages of this discussion, which apparently happened one year ago. Now, I highly encourage you to read this whole thread if you want to get an inside look on why all this happened. Basically, the core idea is that Unity spends a ton of money making the engine relevant, supporting tons of unique platforms that is certainly very expensive, and for the most part Unity has not made a profit, I believe they only went into the green for these last few quarters, and with interest rates rising and investment dollars pretty much drying up, they desperately need more revenue, they can't really go back in the red, just like it says here, 80% of users don't pay anything at all, basically it's the ads business that funds the engine, now most people see Unity as a game engine that does ads on the side, but the business reality is actually the exact opposite, Unity is really an ad company with an engine on the side. So they desperately need to get more money, but ads are based on how many games people play and how much advertisers pay, meaning they don't have much control over that. What they can directly control is indeed get more revenue from the engine side of the business by introducing either a ref share or just like we saw a per game fee. So this is yet another reason why it really does not seem that they are likely to go back on this. They desperately need to make the company profitable in any way. Now, if they are truly committed to going down this path, if a complete reversal is absolutely not in the cards, then here are my suggestions for how to make pretty much the best of a bad situation. Also, before I mention my suggestions, here is the same disclaimer that I made in my very first video. I am a Steam PC solo indie dev, so my suggestions are coming from that one very specific point of view. I am not a mobile expert, I am not a free-to-play expert, so I do hope that Unity won't listen to my suggestions, but I also hope that they won't consult experts in all the other areas of game development when deciding what specific changes to implement.
The industry is huge and changes that might be good for one sector might be terrible for another one. Unity have mentioned how the spirit of this program is really for them to succeed when developers succeed. They have mentioned how it's not their intention to bankrupt anyone. But right now, just based on these rules, just based on this chart, it is technically possible for a developer to go bankrupt. Basically, if your revenue per user is under the fee amount, then you're pretty much on the path to bankruptcy. Or simply just the case that this is talking about revenue and not profit. So if your profit margins are so small that you cannot afford the fee, then once again, you go down to bankruptcy. Back to this Twitter thread, there's actually a nice graph over here with some nice math. And this perfectly shows the problem with the per install model. Here you can see how some examples, the fee is actually pretty fair. For example, up here, Pokemon Go, they would pay literally 0.1% of their revenue. I think anyone would call 0.1% to be perfectly reasonable. And also we can see that it is much better when compared to a flat revenue share model. So for Pokemon Go making 60k, under the per install fee they would pay 60 bucks, whereas under Unreal's 5% they would pay 3 grand, so definitely a much better deal. However, while the fee works fine for this one case, which is heavily monetizing its users, it absolutely completely fails on games like, for example, over here Among Us. In this case, the fee for Among Us would be a whopping 55%. Or for an even worse result, here is a hyper-casual game called Bridge Race, and for this one the fee would actually be 180%. Now that is obviously completely insane, if your fee is higher than your revenue then you can obviously only end in bankruptcy. And over here the following comments do point out exactly the same problem. And basically the proposed solution is it would be individually negotiated with Unity. So basically as things stand right now, basically you would have to trust their intentions, you would have to trust that they generally do not wish to bankrupt developers, and you would also need to trust that if this scenario were to happen, they would actually make an exception and help you not go bankrupt. But right now obviously trust is something that Unity lacks. So here's my very simple feedback on this issue. If the intention is genuinely to merely make money when developers also make money and not bankrupt them, if that truly and genuinely is the intention behind this fee, then I believe that the rules should clearly reflect that. Meaning my suggestion would be just add a simple revenue cap, something like 3% or 5%. So the fee would either be the per install fee or the revenue royalty, whichever one is smallest. So in this example, Pokemon Go would pay 60 bucks and then Among Us would pay 4 bucks. Again, if the goal is indeed to only succeed when developers succeed, then I believe that this very simple rule would make that goal a reality while keeping developers safe from these insane edge cases. Now for some more feedback, my suggestion regarding the issues with installs on different devices. Again, Unity has said it is not in the spirit of this program to overcharge developers, that's why they walk back the fee on reinstalls and demos, but they still confirm that installs on different devices, those will be charged. And their reason for that is because they don't want to track identity across devices. That would pretty much break a ton of privacy laws. I can understand how it's technically impossible to track this over multiple devices without breaking those laws. So my suggestion to solve this problem is very simple. Just allow developers to self-report. Like for example, just allow me to send you a screenshot of my Steam stats and do the math based on copy sold. If there's a huge discrepancy between the self-reported numbers and the estimates, then sure, go ahead and dig deeper. But most developers are going to be honest. So I do not believe that self-reporting would lead to tons of fraud. So once again, if it truly is your intention to not punish developers, if the problem with multi-device installs is simply privacy laws, then this should be a very simple fix. By doing the math based on copy sold and allowing developers to self-report their stats, using that, it would allow developers like me to sell games on Steam and then allow those people to install the game on any device they own, like for example, their PC and also on their Steam Deck without incurring extra fees. And the self-report feature would also solve the privacy problems. Instead of trying to detect piracy, which is essentially an impossible problem, once again, just allow the developer to self-report and do the math based on those numbers and not whatever method you have for detecting piracy. Which again, currently developers do not trust Unity, and so far Unity has responded to the privacy concerns with basically just trust them, just trust their super magic algorithm. Whereas if you allow self-reporting, then there's really no trust needed. The developer gives you their real numbers and math is based on that. Also, just another simple suggestion. Apparently Unity Personal now requires an internet connection for three days, I don't know if this is new, if this was already the case or it changed alongside this fee. Either way, I really don't see why this needs to exist. I assume it's to prevent some kind of abuse, but I really have no idea on what exactly that abuse could be. So maybe there's a good reason for it, but I generally cannot see it. So unless I'm missing something super important, my suggestion would simply be just remove this requirement. It's a free version, this is for hobbies, this is for people who are actually trying to learn and making small games. There's no reason to force them to have an internet connection. And my final suggestion is not really mine, but it's actually from Frey and several other people. Basically, make the changes only apply to Unity 2024 and beyond. Then also, other people have expanded upon this and basically asked for a terms of service that is locked to a specific version. That way, technically, Unity would be legally unable to make changes like this after the fact. 
Now, while I think these changes would be great, personally I really don't expect these to happen. And the reason is based on the same analysis on why I don't think they won't reverse course. The entire point behind this change is to get money from the likes of Pokemon Go and Genshin Impact. Those games were launched years ago and they continue to live nowadays. So if they were to modify the terms to make it so that the new fee is only applicable to future games, they would simply not get money from those games. So that is why, while I think this change would generally be great, I really don't have much hope of it happening. Finally, here's one very simple suggestion. This chart over here really has one very nonsensical part, and it's really this entire column over here for Unity Personal. There is absolutely no reason why anyone would ever pay 20 cents per install. The reason is because apparently the limits update instantly the second you change the license. So basically, if you have a game and it has 200,000 installs and has made $190,000, then at that point you would just buy Unity Pro, which instantly raised the limit to 1 mil. So basically, there's absolutely no logical reason why anyone would pay this fee. Based on this, my very simple advice is just get rid of this entire side, just add a revenue threshold on the free version, pretty much like it was before. If you make over a million dollars, then you have to switch to Pro. That's really it. If you do that, then you can completely cut down this column and nothing changes. I believe that will really help simplify things since there's absolutely no reason why anyone would ever pay this one specific fee. And now that I've given my feedback to Unity, let me give you, the viewer, the Unity developer, my advice on what to do. Like I said, taking the assumption that these changes are not going to reverse, the fee is here to stay. So with that assumption, let's take some time to look at them. As I said, you can completely ignore the personal side, that makes no sense. If you get close to this, you just get Unity Pro. So let's just worry about this column, this million dollar threshold. Now, my advice to you is simply do the exact same thing that I did on the very first video on this topic. Basically, just look at this chart, analyze these rules carefully and calmly, and decide what do you want to do next. Like I mentioned my own use case, my games will never make a million dollars, so my decision is simply I will keep using Unity because for my specific use case, I will never pay any fee. If your use case is also Steam, PC, indie games, if so, then chances are you will never go over this limit, so you will never have to pay any fee. Now, if your use case are free-to-play mobile games where you expect to only be able to monetize each user at under a dollar, if so, then I would definitely highly advise you against using Unity, unless you somehow trust them enough to give you a special deal. Or yet another thing you can do is, as many people have pointed out, for some people the numbers don't matter at all. For some people, they don't care if the numbers are fair or unfair. For some people, what matters most is trust, and they feel that Unity can never be trusted again. If that's you, then yeah, my advice is you should probably quit Unity unless you feel there's some way they can regain your trust. Although again, if the only way that they could regain your trust is to revert these changes, then I really don't think this will happen. And now let me also address some very valid points that people directed at me when I said that I won't keep using Unity because the fees do not apply to me. Most comments were saying something like, okay, so the fees right now don't affect you, but tomorrow they could lower the limit to a low amount which would affect you. And my answer to that is, yep, that could definitely happen. They could change the terms tomorrow and change them to something much, much worse. However, personally, I see that's really true of everything. I'm right here on YouTube, which is also a company that is known for changing crazy things that no one wanted. Technically, I could wake up tomorrow and my channel would be completely demonetized or just outright deleted. Or another example, Steam could suddenly decide tomorrow to up their rate from 30% to 90%. Technically, that could happen. So personally, for this argument, I really don't find it productive to panic about all of the bad things that technically could happen. Instead, for me, I simply look at the current reality and just adapt to it. If tomorrow Unity changes these terms once more, then I will once again read the new terms and come to a new decision. That's also the exact same reason why, personally, I don't consider the trust factor in making my decision. I've never really relied on trusting or distrusting Unity. For me, it is merely a tool. It is a tool with certain capabilities and, of course, a certain cost. If the capabilities or the cost changes, then I will analyze the new reality and once again adapt to it. At the end of the day, this is really your decision, so make your decision on what engine you want to use based on whatever criteria you decide. Like I said in the previous two videos, I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. Whether you stay or quit Unity, either way, that's fine by me. All I can say is I genuinely wish you the best of luck in your game dev journey, regardless of what engine you choose to use. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.